The Groove Cruise is a three-day festival basically on the water, leaving from an ocean liner. It's been going on in Miami for the last 10 years. This year will be the 10-year anniversary. And originally they couldn't get enough people to fill the entire boat, but now it sells out before the lineup's even announced. So there's basically 2,000 people on a boat partying for three days and going to several different islands in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and this year they moved it over to the West Coast and we went to Catalina Island and Mexico. I got involved four years ago in 2010 was my first cruise. That was the last year that they only filled half the boat. I've known Sydney, uh, Sydney Blue for six six years. Uh, a good friend of mine, Brian, um, DJ Exacta. Uh, we used to talk a lot on um, on MSN, and I remember the one time he he hit me up, and he had this little icon uh, as his as his avatar, uh, and it was this girl sitting with headphones on, surrounded by vinyl. And I remember like making the picture big on the screen and I was like, oh, this is this is a really cool icon. Where did you get this from? And he's like, oh, it's this, this girl DJ from uh, from Canada. She's called Sydney Blue. So I looked her up and there was like, you know, playlists and charts and all that kind of stuff. And all the music was like really good. It was like very much the same thing that I was into, very much the same thing that Brian was into. That's how I very first like heard of her. And then, um, she was doing, uh, she did a couple of shows with Brian and he said he'd, he'd met up with her and that, you know, she was really cool and that she liked my music and whatever. So he gave me, um, he gave me her contact details for like, I think, I think back then it was like AOL Instant Messenger, <laughs> like that exists anymore. Um, and we just got like, got to talking. Uh, roughly around the same time, uh, Dead Mouse just got signed up to, um, my management company, which was 24 Management at the time, um, and that was like through Chris Lake, and so I was talking to him as well, and it was kind of funny because like the one night I was like, oh yeah, you're from Toronto actually. Have you heard of like Sydney Blue? Like she, you know, she's supposed to be really good. Like you know, we've been chatting and stuff, and he's like, yeah, dude, that's my girlfriend. And I was like, oh no fucking way, like you know. And so it was just like this real kind of like small world kind of thing. But I'm probably one of the only people. Uh, you know, sort of like, I guess, knocking around in the currency, who would actually sort of heard of Joanne before they'd heard of Joel. And so, but the first time we actually met, she was in New York, and um, we were doing, uh, I was doing a Pasha show, and um, so Brian was, uh, was, was opening up for me, and he'd asked if Joanne could come and do the opener for the whole show. So she was actually like the opening DJ, so it was actually like her, and then Brian and then me and then me and him like played back to back but she like kind of hung out all night and um, 
it was just it was just really good we all got on really well like we all went out to dinner and stuff beforehand and and you know it was just like a really cool thing and literally ever since then we've kind of been the best of friends you know like uh, whenever I go to Toronto we used to hang out and stuff and then she moved to Miami obviously I was DJing a lot more in Miami than I was in Toronto so like once I once I was going over there and stuff she'd come out to all my shows and we'd go out and do dinner and you know it's it's just been one of those things like two like-minded people into the same music, you know, who happened to be coming up in the scene at the same time and it's just kind of like our paths just crossed and they've stayed that way ever since and now this is like, this is my fourth Groove Cruise uh, that, I've, that I've done and, um, and she's been on every single one of those as well so it's just been really great. You're, you're, you're a good editor, right? Something that's really cool about being on the water for three days with all of these people is you also get a chance to socialize with some of your DJ friends because, I mean, we have nowhere to go. We're on a boat together, and I have really good friends that I play with on almost every cruise. One of them's Funk Agenda. Chris Lake's done it a couple times, and it's just really cool to be able to be amongst some of my colleagues, my peers, that I respect and just have fun with them and hang out with them. Asian, she's back! <laughs> okay, so this is my very good friend, Chris Lake, and we've been friends for how long? For a long time. A while. Time. Yeah, a while. And how did we meet? Well, we met through um, a guy with the ears. This guy. We all did the group cruise about two years ago, 2012. It was amazing. It was Miami, and uh, 2011. Was it 11? Yeah, 2011. Okay. Like, yeah. So a huge crew of us went in the group cruise, and it was it was a real bonding experience for all of us. But we decided to come back and do it again on the West Coast. So why did you decide to come back? So well, it was a bit tough for me. I think it was a bit different from. Uh, Guys, yeah. um, Ryan from the group cruise, he got some footage of me from 2011. He did some things that, well, I, I, I'd rather people not see. Uh, <laughs> uh, he contacted me and he says, Chris, I've got this, I've got this dirt on you. Um, if you don't play ball, if you don't come back on the boat, if you don't play, if you don't do everything that I want, I'm going to fuck you over. I'm going to screw uh, you. You're, 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 you're done. You're done. Um, so, anyway, you know, after all this collusion, I thought you'd fucking prick Ryan for coming out. I'll do it. You know, I, I, I don't want people to know about all this stuff. So you're basically you know, right. Fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> fuck you. It's not on. <laughs> and that's it. That's the story. That's that the whole no story behind the group the interview. Oh wait, and then there's this whole label thing called Rising Music. Oh yeah, and, yeah. So oh yeah. Took, so, so we took it one step further. And then and we said, took it to another level. Yeah, and he said, he said, if you don't take TJ on number strip. Yes. I'm throwing you overboard. I'm, yeah, it's done. And so now we've got this huge label party and it's all because he's being bribed. And that's it. That's the reason why Rising is hey, the biggest <laughs> This is the joy of the United States of America, you know? <laughs> Top to bottom. Government group cruise. Ma, thank you. This is my beautiful get friend Gina. And we are, what are S We're sailing right now. We Look. are sailing. Beautiful. And this is the gorgeous wife of Chris. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Since that first year I played in 2010, literally they have not had anybody else but group cruises on the boat. They've sold the boat out completely. So now it's a 10 year anniversary this year in Miami that's coming up and they're gonna have 3,000 people, a bigger boat, and we're going an extra day. We're actually going to Mexico. Okay, so this is Ryan. He is the talent buyer for the group cruise and he's been booking me for the last four years. He started booking me when it was a baby cruise and yeah. now we're two coasts, thousands of people. Miami is completely sold out now and we're going on, you know, the second or third year being like completely sold out and I'm so excited to be a part of the 10 year anniversary this 
January. January. Okay, so I moved to Miami, right, from Toronto, and me and Ryan became really good friends, and when we became friends, I didn't have a car. So Ryan was like, well, I have this car. And then Michigan, driver's license. I still have Michigan plates. Yeah, Michigan plates. And yeah, he was like, if, I'm throwing from. if you need to borrow it, you can borrow it. And so I would go and drive this car around and go, go wherever I need to go in this, this car. So my like little like intern to him was I would burn CDs, like mixes, and I would put them in <laughs> the CD player. I'd be like, Oscar G live, made in Miami, like, you know, whatever. So give me new music and I would just like, Yeah, I would just put CDs in the CD player and that would be our trade off. It's but, totally forgot about it. Yeah. Hi, this is Sydney Blue, and we're on the West Coast version of the Groove Cruise, and I'm super happy to be back. This is my fifth Groove Cruise, and it's amazing as usual. I definitely have to say the highlight for me for this whole trip was the Funk Farm Party on Saturday night in the main room. One of the reasons why was because I decided to play tech house and proper house music for this set. And I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get away with it because I was normally used to playing EDM over the prior years and it was mostly an EDM cruise but I really wanted to show people that I'm doing something different now and I don't want to play blazing EDM anymore. I really just want to play good records, proper house music and tech house. And I did it and people went off and it was so great to see that so I will definitely continue this tradition from now on. My experience with the people that attended, that were fans that came to my shows, is always really amazing because they go out of their way to tell me that they enjoyed my set after they see me on the cruise the next day. And that really means a lot because I like to hear that I'm doing something right. It's good to know that they enjoyed it because if I didn't have those people coming up to me and saying that, then I probably would think that people didn't enjoy it. And it really makes me feel good. It makes me want to continue working hard and basically going in the direction that I'm going in. And I love them, and I love the support. It's extremely inspiring. As an intransitive verb, surely fucks. Its meaning's not always sexual. It can be used as an adjective, such as John's doing all the fucking work. As part of an adverb, surely talks too fucking much. And as almost every word in a sentence, fuck the fucking fuckers. As you must realize, there aren't too many words with the versatility of fuck. As in these examples, describing situations such as...